Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. This time I'm going to be replacing the damaged wires on my motor as well as gutting the hall sensors then putting it back together, making it look nice and then testing it at the end. So without further ado, let's go on with the video. Now the state is out, you can see these are the hall centers up here, these are the phase wires and coils and everything. If you want to know how I got this out then check my previous video which will be in the top right hand corner on how I did it. So as you can see there, the little board, then you've got three sensors. Um, this one here is the one that's actually failed, you can see the wires are kind of burnt off um, and I've scraped it out. But I thought whilst I was at it I might as well replace all three. So I've got the little bag of spares here. Uh, so let's get to removing this. Now obviously as this is broken I'm not worried about um, damaging the hall sensors. Um, obviously I want to be careful of the phase windings because they still work. So I'm literally just going to try and kind of pry them out. So for the one in the middle I found just kind of hit it with a screwdriver at an angle because you got it's, the, it's in the slot basically. So that last one put up quite a bit of a fight which clearly shows that they are epoxied in. Um, what I'm going to do is loosely fit the new ones and then once I'm sure they're in the right place um, epoxy them in place as well um, and then take the wires off here and get this all ready. What's important when doing this is make sure you put the sensors in the correct way round. So if you actually take a look at the old sensors you'll see one side's bevelled, um, there's a bit of a bevel. You want to make sure that the most flat side, the longest side goes inwards um, and then the bevelled side is kind of pointing out. So as you look at the sensors, you've got the um, output wire on the left uh, and then you've got the ground in the middle and then you've got the power on the right um, and that lines up with the PCB. So these sensors, I'll put a link in the description if you want them, uh, these are definitely the right one. Now that all the wire um, and stuff is here, I've been trying to get it into the motor but I knew it would be, wouldn't be easy but I didn't think it would be as hard as this. Basically the point is that this silicon wire is very flexible but it's also got quite a um, thick uh, insulation layer um, and there it's a very tight torrent basically with this hole here you haven't got a lot of room so I've tried threading this wire onto it and trying to put it through but yeah it is just not going through um, that, and that's just the phase wires I've got all the um, hall sensor wires to do as well so what I think I'm going to have to do is for the section that goes through here or anything after that is basically take off the insulation um, to the bare wire and then replace it with heat shrink because um, this is 10 gauge which is equivalent to 6 mil squared which is what the old cable is made of um, and I, I don't really want to downsize the wire because I've got some like thinner wire down here but I don't really want to downsize because then I mean I can't put as much current through it and that just shows on that little sample how much it will reduce it by. I stripped it back by just um, using a knife to go along the insulation like that, back to the point where I marked. So now I'm just going to try and uh, twist it all together at the end and get the heat shrink on. So that actually seems to have worked quite well. Right, so here are all three wires uh, done as best I can. I've tried to keep the length. Uh, the wire exposed at the end all the same so now it's just time to see if they're going to fit and whether it's going to rub through this or what the hell's going to happen okay that's one down <laughs> there we go it's not the uh, loosest of fits um, and I've got to also get the um, or like the phase wires and stuff with these thin little ones through. Okay, so that went better than I thought. I've managed to get all of the hall wires through which I put in first um, and then the phase wires which took a little bit of bending but um, putting that heat shrink on the bottom just to protect the ends definitely helped. Um, the only change I'm going to have to make is uh, to add an extra yellow wire because I bought the wrong number of wires uh, and I'm one short for the hall sensors um, but I don't think one little wire like that will make the hugest difference, touch wood. So now that I all know it works, I've just got to wait for this other one to arrive and then you can start all wiring up basically. This 
is the new bundle of cables. I fitted the extra hall sensor cable which came today. Um, so I've now got six small wires and obviously the three main phase wires. Phase wires? Phase wires. Um, and then I'm just trying an idea about putting some heat shrink right at the top where it goes in um, just to give a bit more protection. So what I do, oh yeah, and also I've put um, little bits of heat shrink all along these wires just to keep them together. So what I'm going to do is feed the um, hall wires through first and then once that's through send any of the phase wires through. So let's do the yellow one and then the green one and finally the blue one. Should know. I'm going to make it make it all proper so that all the wires come out in the same order. No, oh, that's much better. Now all the wires go through in the same place. And here you can see the reason for that red just provides a little bit of extra support right around where it goes in, which is the most vulnerable area, pretty much. All right. So here's the actual temperature center itself. It's just a little um black blob. Uh, I've added some wires to it, and what I'm going to try and do is stick it underneath the windings like that because um, these are the bits that actually get hot and then it kind of spreads over the stator so you could put it on the side like that um, that would be alright uh, you could stuff it down one of the channels I'm just gonna use some and more of this um, silicone stuff um, and just secure it in place <laughs> This is just a small PCB which makes a voltage divider with a thermistor just to give the output to the Savaton. I use some solid wire to wrap the two ends together just to give the solder connection a bit more strength. I then added a generous amount of flux and cranked up my arm to max and filled in the joint. And whilst it might not be the prettiest thing on earth, um, it should be more than enough just to hold that wire in place. You can see that's actually what they do here, the same technique. They just wrap the coils around the wire. So just check the phase wires at 0.2 ohms. Yeah, about 0.2. Now I've also got this braiding which I'm gonna put on the outside just to keep all the wires together. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tape the ends together just to keep it all as one. All right, so now that's all in one bundle. Uh, the hard part is getting it started because um, you can see it kind of like expands. So it's not hard once you've got it going. Let's, oh, there we go. <laughs> Made it sound much harder than it was. And then it's just a matter of kind of expanding it and getting all the bits of cable through basically all the way down. So that when it's done, it will look a little something like that. And now I'm going to get the side cover and push the wires through. And then the next bit's all about getting this bundle through. So you just want to kind of pull it in as tight as it will go. Try not to snag anything. And then wiggle it around till it grips the bearing should just start to go on, there we go spins nice and freely now I guess it's time to see how, if at all, it fits on the bike so we get that wire out of the way oh, look at that keep it neatly out of the way, just for testing and a good way to check that all the wires have actually been done correctly is if you pinch them all together then try and rotate it, there should be a lot of resistance and it should be smooth as well. Um, that's shorting out all the phase wires um, and if you just do two of them it's kind of, it's a bit jittery. Um, so yeah, that's all fine. Now for the terminations on the other end, I'm using these little um, lugs which aren't ideal but I think they'll be absolutely fine. Um, that's all the store had when I was doing my order. Uh, they still have an M6 hole, they're just not quite as thick as the ones I've got in the battery connectors, but we'll see how it goes. So yeah, so I just take back enough insulation to fit into there, put it in there, use this crimp tool, but kind of like in reverse, just to squash it flat. Um, and then I'm going to apply some solder just to be safe, and then put a bit of heat shrink with the correct colour for the phase wire over the top. Right, so I've just connected it up to the vest, because as you know, I damaged my sabaton, just need a bit of paper for insulation. Um, and then got the old control unit that I built for my previous bike. Um, so, yeah, I have genuinely no idea what's going to happen. Right, so got the BMS app here to turn it on and off quickly if I need to. Uh, got the VESC app just to run some tests, get all the data off it and then control it. Got the little uh, control unit for my old bike, throttle, all of that. So, let's power it on. 
we get a green light. Which we do, I don't know if you can see that, but it's definitely there. Uh, now I'm going to connect to it and run the setup wizard. So this is the FOC wizard, so this will get all the data from the motor. So this will measure the resistance. Okay, that sounded good. And then this is the big one where it's going to spin it up. So let's see what happens. Spinning backwards, but that's not a problem. Excellent. Okay, successful. So we've got about 18.4 milliohms. That's what I measured with my meter. All the other things look great. So let's see if the throttle works. Oh yeah, that is what I call a successful repair. The way I test the hall sensors, and by the way, they do all work, so yeah, no need to worry, um, is you can either use an oscilloscope, if you're lucky enough like me, to have one, or you can just use a multimeter, or even just an LED, just something to indicate the output going between five volts and zero volts. So what you need to do is you pick a hall wire that you're gonna test, say the blue one, um, and you need a 10k resistor, or basically any pull-up resistor bigger than about 5k. Um, and you connect that between it um, and positive. And then just use a multimeter to measure the output. So you can see you've got 5 volts. And then just slowly rotate the wheel, literally just a little bit. And you should see it go back down to zero. Um, and, that's good. and then if you do it a little bit more, it should go back up. And then back to zero. Um, and that means it's working because every time the, the, um, the sensor passes a magnet, it gets triggered. And then it's either when it moves on to the next one or when it leaves that magnet. Anyway, when you rotate it, it should go back to zero. Um, and you need the pull up to testing it because before I was just connecting to the output and wasn't getting anything. So yeah, the only thing left to do, I believe, is put the connector on the hall sensors. And then yeah, that is the complete rewiring of my hub motor done.